Hello folks. So in this video, I'm going to continue working on Space Invaders in Pygame. I'll run the code from last time to show you how far I got. So you can see I've got the spaceship and the aliens. They're moving around by themselves. I can move the spaceship with the left and right arrow keys. And I've got this health bar and I can shoot if I hold down the space bar. At the moment, I don't have any collision and aliens aren't shooting back. Uh, nothing like that. So what I'm going to focus on in this video is to add precisely that. I'm going to add... Uh, an additional sprite class for the alien bullets and to be honest I can pretty much just copy this uh, spaceship bullets class or well I've just called it bullets but this is the one for the spaceship and I can just put it down here underneath my aliens and just rename it so create alien bullets class and rename it here alien bullets so that's going to be the same. I'm going to have the same init function. It's going to take an X and a Y argument. The first line is going to be the same again here to reference the sprite class from Pygame. The image is going to be slightly different. I have used a different color of alien bullets. So I'll update that. Then I create a rectangle from the image. And then lastly, I position the rectangle in the X and the Y coordinates that I feed in when I create this. So that's easy enough. And the next thing is the update function. So if you remember the bullets on the spaceship, well, all they did was just move up from the bottom of the screen to the top. So the Y coordinate was re reducing. In this case, they're coming down the screen. So the Y coordinate is increasing. However, I am significantly outnumbered. So I don't want the bullets to go that fast. I'll reduce them to maybe two. And then of course, when they go off the bottom of the screen, I want them to disappear. So I just change this to rectangle top. If it's gone beyond the screen height, then self.kill. So that will delete the instance of that bullet. So that's the alien class, uh, the alien bullet class created. The next thing to do is create a group for them. So alien underscore bullet underscore group is a pygame.sprite.group. And of course, with this group now created, I need to remember to go into the main game loop and add in the update and the draw functions. So let's come down here, alien bullet group dot update. So this will make sure that they move down the screen and alien bullet group dot draw. So this will make sure that they're actually shown on the screen. So, okay, that's fine. I'll run the code to check for any errors and everything is okay. Of course, I'm not actually creating any instances of these bullets yet, so there's nothing to be shown. So how do I want to approach this? With the, with the spaceship, it was easy enough. I was just looking for an event of pressing the spacebar, and that's going to create an instance every time that happens. With the aliens, I need a slightly different approach. I want the aliens to randomly shoot bullets at me. So first of all, I need to pick an alien that's going to be producing the bullet. So I'll come down here and just... Actually, no, I'm going to do it above my event handlers. So just as soon as the background is drawn, I want to do the rest of the drawing, uh, which is going to be these bullets. So I'll add a comment, create random alien bullets. And these bullets, again, just the same as my spaceship bullets, I want them to be on a timer. So if you remember what I did there, I took the current time and then I picked the time when the game starts. And then I just compared those two and when a certain time passed, I fired a bullet and I reset the timer. So how do I do the same thing? Well, first of all, I need to record the current time. And I do that by saying time now equals pygame.time.get underscore ticks. So that will tell me what time it is right now. And then I look for a shot. So if time now minus... And I'm going to introduce a new variable here, last alien shot. So the last time we fired compared to the current time, if that is greater than the alien cooldown, then fire a bullet. Uh, but before I type all that out, I'm just going to go up to the main section and declare these extra variables, because otherwise I will forget. So up here, I'm just going to add them in. So I had alien cooldown. And I will set this to a full second uh, bullet cooldown in milliseconds. 
and the other one was last alien shot. So that was just a timer. So I just need to say time dot get ticks. So it means that as soon as the game starts, it starts this timer. So if I come down into this main code, once a full second has passed, then time now minus the last alien shot will be great. Well, it will equal alien cooldown. So as soon as we get past that, I want to actually create an instance of the bullet. And I do that in the same way as I did with a spaceship. However, first I need to choose the alien that's going to be shooting this bullet. So I'm going to assign one of these aliens, attacking underscore alien. And this is going to be randomly selected. So I've already loaded the random module previously, and now I'm going to use the choice function of that random module. And what I'm looking through is my alien group sprites. So alien underscore group dot sprites. So what this is going to do is go through that entire group and it's going to pick a random alien and it's going to assign it to this variable. So now that I have this, I can create one of the bullets. So alien underscore bullet is going to be an instance of the alien underscore bullets class. And this class needed to take an X and a Y coordinate. I want the bullet to be created just underneath the selected alien. So I can take the rectangle properties of that. If I come down here, I can say attacking alien dot rect center X. And for the Y coordinate, attacking alien dot rect dot bottom. So it's going to come on, uh, the bullet is going to be generated just directly underneath the alien. And once I've done that, I need to add this to the group. So alien underscore bullet group dot add the new alien bullet. And lastly, I need to make sure that I have reset my timer because otherwise that condition is just constantly going to be met. So now that I fired a shot, I need to make sure that the last alien shot is right now time underscore now. Okay, so let's just try this out. And there we go. So roughly every second I'm firing a shot from one of these aliens. But like I said, I am heavily outnumbered there. So I don't really want too many bullets on the screen. I kind of want to limit how many they can fire at me at the same time. So I'm going to add another little check into here. And this is going to be len so I want to take the length of the alien bullet group, which is basically saying how many bullets have already been fired. So alien bullet group, less than, let's say five. So no more than five bullets are going to be created. The other check I want to add is that I actually have aliens to choose from. So let's say len alien group, oh, that seem to come up, alien group is greater than zero. So as long as I actually have aliens to choose from, only then do I want to create a bullet. Otherwise, I'm going to get an error here. So I'll run this now. Uh, nothing should change, but I just wanted to check that the code is working fine. So one, two, three, four, five, and no more being generated until that one goes off the screen. So that's all working fine. So the next thing then to add, I mean, at the moment, I've got the aliens shooting at me and I'm shooting back at the aliens, but nothing is actually happening. So what I want to add now is the collision between my bullets and the aliens and between their lasers and the spaceship. Uh, but I want to get do that in, uh, in more detail. So I want to cover that properly because there are different kinds of collision that you can do. And I'm going to discuss some of them here, including uh, more accurate types of collision that you can get between the bullets and the spaceship. So that's going to be in a separate video. So for now, I'm going to stop here. Uh, and if you found this video useful, then please do leave a like. And if you'd like to stay up to date with more of these tutorials, then feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching.